This is a video by Rich Pin. Today we are working on a Chevrolet K20. This happens to be a 1979 model. And the problem we're having today is we have a coolant leak. So we got to get in there and figure out what the problem is. As you can see, this is a big V8 engine. This is the 350 cubic inch V8. Well, there's tons of these. And it's hard to see. But we've got some coolant leaking out of the thermostat housing, water outlet. I don't know if you can see it right there. But the coolant was weeping right out of there. So what we're going to do is, while we're underneath there, we won't just replace the gasket, but we'll replace the thermostat also. Why not while we're in there? Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to drain the coolant. And of course, this engine is cold, and so we want a cold engine. So we're going to drain the coolant now. Here is the fun of having an aftermarket radiator. They put the drain right over a little piece of metal. so. I relieved it a little bit, and I got a short piece of 5 16 hose on there, so now it will direct the coolant into my pan, otherwise it would be all over the place. So now we can put our pan underneath here and go up top and open that radiator. Alright, so the engine is cold, now we can... Remove our cap. Now we can open the drain and drain our coolant. Right, let's see if we can open this up. Oh! Ah! Jeez, this new aftermarket radiator, it doesn't want to open. So, I'm going to get my little tool here, see if... It won't be that tight when I put it back. All right, it's a draining. Here's my modified socket. Just cut a little cut in it and lets me open a stubborn one. Actually, this is made for the um, the old brass radiators with the wider piece on it, but. It worked on that. I cringe when I work on these plastic ones. Alright, we're draining. We're gonna leave the hose on there. How do you like this location for the thermostat, huh? Boy, this is an access this is accessible as they come. Oh boy. We drain the coolant and I and we're leaking. Well.
at least we got our pan underneath there. That's it, Rich. Drop the bolt. How's this housing look? Well, it's pitted. When they're pitted like that, you probably should replace it. But well, what we're going to do is we're going to use a new gasket and we're going to use some sealant. Clean it up the best we can and see if she seals. A little stubborn, huh? <laughs> you hear that? But well, that hasn't been in, out in a while. Well, we got lots of cleaning to do. All right, this uh, manifold is pretty pitted in the uh, water outlet, so. We're going to use some sealant on there, otherwise I'm afraid that it's going to leak. Just in case you have a, a 350 like this, there is your stent super sat number. Here's the gasket. Should have got a Felpro. The um, stent has a sticky back to it which would help if you uh, didn't put some sealant on it The sealant is on the outlet here.
cleaned up the bolts. Mosquito bugging me here. Ah, mosquitoes. All right, let's tighten this up. Jeez, those bolts are a lot freer than when they came out. Shouldn't use the deep socket. Now with that vacuum switch there. Okay. Let that dry a bit before we put our cooling in. And we should be looking good. Now the ceiling has set on the water outlet for a, a little bit, so we're ready to put in our coolant. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this tool right here, the spill proof funnel kit, because we're most likely going to have some air in the system, and this will help us to get the air out. Now if you want to see how to use this, I will put the link in the description below and um, you can click on that and see me use that kit. So once we get all the air out, check for leaks and then top it off and that will be it. The job will be done. So that's all there is to replacing a thermostat on your Chevy 350.